Hello everybody and welcome. By now Kerbal Space Program 2 has went into early access and yeah, it's a bit of a hot mess. Personally, I stand by my assessment that I believe it can still grow into a fantastic game, but as of right now the developers are far away from their ultimate goal, as stated by senior game designer Tom Vinita. Our ultimate goal is to slay the Kraken. As we now have painfully experienced, the Kraken is alive and well. One does not simply slay the Kraken. So, until the developers get it at least a little subdued, here are five things that will make your life easier in KSP2. Number one, joint rigidity. Wobbly rockets are back in a big way and there is no autostrut feature in the early access version of KSP2. A blatant oversight if you ask me and many of you commented on my last video that you all hate those wobbly rockets like I do. But there is a solution for this if you don't mind going hands on with a configuration file. All your save games and vehicles are stored in C, Users, Your Username, App Data, Local Low, Intercept Games. In there you will also find a folder named Global. Inside this is a file called physicssettings.json and there you need to look for joint rigidity. Just add a few zeros before the period and your rockets will turn from this into this. This is the same vehicle, the only thing I have changed is the joint settings. One headache less. And while I tested it, I had a benign Kraken visit. One of the Kerbals from the intro screen decided to show up and witness this long and hard shaft of fuel tanks. Ok, let's move on quickly to the next item. Number 2. Remain in control. This issue I've encountered myself. At some point it can happen that your usual WASD controls are no longer working and you have no idea why. Funny enough, Kerbals can still be controlled when you go on EVA. Here is how you get your control back. Press the delete key. It is the key binding that switches your control input from flight mode to docking mode. In KSP1 we at least had some kind of indicator that you have switched to that mode because some part of the UI would change. Here we get a banner informing us of the change, but if you don't look at the screen for a second or something, it's gone. For some reason, some people don't either see it or it doesn't appear and then you don't know why your control is gone. Actually, it isn't gone, the input has switched to the IJKL keys, but that's not something you will find out except by chance. So yeah, I hope this helps if you encounter this particular issue. Speaking of getting stuff back… Number 3. Get your crew back. Ever had the problem that suddenly you couldn't assign the crew you wanted because some Kerbals inexplicably went missing? Well, there's two possibilities here. Number one, you try to recover your vessel that hasn't really taken off yet. Then it can happen that your crew just goes poof and is gone, even though the flight report says it recovered all crew members. That's a bug. But there's another situation you could run into where in the tracking station the game will claim all crew members are at KSC, but when you are in the VAB and want to assign them, some are just not there. This can happen when you build with multiple subassemblies in the same workspace and those subassemblies have crew capability. For some reason, after every reword, the game tries to put at least one Kerbal in each of the command modules. Which makes it so that for this assembly here we are lacking a few members. In this case you have to scour your sub-assemblies, usually with a 2 or 3 at the end in the Kerbal Manager and retrieve your crew and put it on your main vehicle. Annoying, but at least it's not game breaking. Well until that Kraken is tamed, let's tame something else. Number 4. Taming the Parts Manager The thing that annoys me personally the most about the Parts Manager is the time it takes to load on a vehicle with a bit more complex construction. 
This can take up a few seconds even. And in addition to that, the game is very generous with the duration of your right click. So much so that when you just want to turn the camera and use right click for that, it will also open Parts Manager because the game thought you clicked short enough for it to register as, oh, the player wants to know more about this part. To save yourself time, you can open the Parts Manager right away, resize it, yes, you can resize it, I totally missed that for my good or bad first impression video, and put it somewhere where it won't disturb you. And the final item for making things easier, number 5. Easier interplanetary travel. As of now, getting anywhere outside of the Kerbin Man Minna system is a bit difficult. One of the reasons for that is the lack of a transfer window planner, as Stock KSP received as one of its last content updates. Right now, you need to eyeball it manually. But first, build a vehicle with enough delta V. You can use the stock trip planner in the VAB to get a ballpark number how much fuel you need to pack on your trip. Make sure you have a generous headroom for additional adjustments. But when and where should you try to execute your transfer maneuver? There is a handy graphic for this that was posted on Reddit for the original game that is still viable. Build your vehicle, get it into a stable orbit around Kerbin, then time warp in the tracking station until your desired destination is in relative position to Kerbin as depicted here. Now to set up your maneuver plan. If you want to go to the inner planets like Moho and Eve, you need to perform your maneuver on the sunlit side of Kerbin. When you want to visit the planets further out, you need to do it in the Shadow Zone. Anyway, when we set up our maneuver, we run into the next couple of problems. First, in the current state, you don't see the orbital path drawn around your target, just the points where you enter and exit the sphere of influence. Also, and this is super annoying right now, you need to eyeball your intercept because the game does not anchor the intercept node information in place when you right click on it. Well, it does, but only as long as you don't manipulate the maneuver plan. So again, you have to eyeball it and probably do some adjustment burns along the way. As for the orbital intersect, plan your maneuver to have it close to the planet. Then, when it's time to execute, watch the periapsis number in map view. Execute the plan, and when you see the periapsis change, make sure to cut your engine when you see this number come down. Because, especially with interplanetary burns, you can easily overshoot your target. Now, I recommend that you use the throttle limiter and reduce your engine's output. Then, either burn prograde or retrograde, depending on if you want to raise or lower your periapsis around your target. I recommend getting it to 30 km or even a bit lower if you want to go to Draz, Mohu and Elu. Duna should be above 50, Eve needs to be above 100 and Jewel needs to be above 250 or better 300. At least as soon as atmospheric heating is implemented, because yeah, that's a feature that's not yet in the game. Alright, those were 5 things that will make your life in Kerbal Space Program 2 easier. Is there anything you need help with? Did you come across another Kerbal life hack that you want to share? Please tell us in the comments down below, or come over on my Discord server and let's have a chat about that. Also, I'd love to provide you guys with more mission content, but just like you, I'm more in the process of wrangling with the shortcomings of the game than being able to fully enjoy it. But as I already stated in my previous video, KSP is in the worst state it is ever going to be. And compared to where the first game was at its first release, this gives me hope for the future. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.